Free will is a myth. Religion is a joke. We are all pawns controlled by something greater. Means. The DNA of the soul. They shape our will. They are the culture. Quote by Monsoon from the video game Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Now I do hope you're sitting comfortably because for the next 10 minutes you're gonna listen to me be incredibly pretentious about a meme. Now I don't think I need to explain what a meme is, but this specific part of internet humor might require some background. The Wojak is an MS Paint drawing of a man that is often edited online to represent either a group of people or a specific emotion. Around 2018, edits of a Wojak made to look like an old person were shared around a lot and were coined Boomer Wojaks after the baby boomer generation. This particular one got very popular because of the OK Boomer meme, which was funny at first, and then it died a quick and painful death because you could not stop saying it. Similar characters were created to represent opinions and behaviors of other age groups such as Zoomers for Generation Z. This eventually expanded to more general opinions and outlooks on life, and that is how popular personas appeared such as the consumer, representing people who play to consumerism, the coomer, representing people addicted to pornography, and as you can see this is going to get very stupid, and the topic of this speech, the doomer. Doomers online display a nihilistic outlook on both their personal life and societal development. The Doomer mindset, if there really even is such a thing, essentially dictates that all existence is doomed to end horribly and so there is no point in trying to achieve anything. If you were to open the Doomer subreddit, you'd be greeted by a post that has been pinned by the moderators titled Notes from a Doomer, and I think it perfectly creates a picture of how people who have learned to identify themselves with this character think. It reads, Sometimes I wonder how you're not all walking around in a state of pure, unquellable panic. I am, and you are, but why aren't they? Have they truly numbed themselves to the gravity of the situation? Now, to some of you, it may sound silly that I'm discussing a meme so seriously, and it is. However, I think that the way in which online humor has developed should be considered when discussing societal trends. Due to the fact that we spend a lot of time on there, it makes sense that the types of jokes we share online can represent larger trends within the younger generation. Therefore, not only is its humor worth analyzing, but we should also take a look at how the online world contributes to the Doomer phenomenon. Social media has developed into a mix of informational, opinion-oriented, and entertainment content. Suddenly, in the last 20 or so years, we have more immediate access to many sources of news than ever before, and while that is, for the most part, a positive development, being constantly bombarded by conflicting sources of information can leave people feeling jaded with the world. You scroll through your feeds and you see more and more horrible news, you're not even sure what to trust and you feel worried but also powerless to change anything. What doesn't help is that the internet is not a great place for tonal consistencies. For example, you could have a Twitter account and one day they post a tweet about a political topic that they feel very passionate about and it's this essay-length discussion on it. And then their next tweet is going to be about how much they want to sleep with a cat girl. There is no real consistency and there probably never will be. As funny as this can sometimes be, it is not a great way to assess what situations are serious and what are not. And all of us have found ourselves in this sort of nihilistic, humorous state where everything is at the same time the end of the world and also this week's joke which we're going to point and laugh at until we go to the next one. This nihilistic outlook is something that a lot of people from my generation and the one before me struggle with. That is why we can notice increasingly high numbers of people online turning towards radical ideologies, as it gives their lives some kind of purpose. Doomers, on the other hand, have found themselves completely unable to deal with this situation, resigning themselves instead to quiet desperation in their own rooms with little hope of improving anything. However, is this the appropriate response? The issue with this kind of thinking is that it both ignores historical precedent and seems to give itself an air of intelligence while doing so. 
At the end of the day, if you realize that the world has many problems and instead of working to fix them, you just sit back and feel bad, then the effect you have on your environment is no different than that of people who remain ignorant. And all you end up doing is just angrily grumbling, we live in a society, which doesn't help anyone. It is also untrue to say that the world can't get better, as we can see that it has. The number of people living outside of extreme poverty has risen from just over 100 million in 1820 to over 6 billion in 2015. Furthermore, rights that we have, such as the right to unionization, an 8-hour workday, weekends off work, and the rights of many marginalized communities, are things that people have got to fight for over centuries. None of this is to say that the world is in a remotely good condition at the moment, because I do not think so. We should be very wary of conformist optimism, as it can trick us into thinking that we have reached the peak of human development and we can just do no better than this, and questioning the people above us is simply a mistake. This is not true. However, it is also untrue that we should just give up, as many before us have found themselves in hopeless situations. When monarchies ruled the world, people fought against them, no matter how hopeless it may have seemed. Many before us sought justice and died leaving the world no more just a place than the one they came into. So what? They died knowing that they made an effort. And I sincerely hope that we will be able to say the same. Something else that boomers will need to be convinced of, however, is that it even matters if improvements can be made, as to many, the perceived utter meaninglessness of existence means that whether or not we can change anything doesn't really matter. Due to the internet, many people around my age have been exposed rather young to so much information that we can easily feel how small we are. Essentially, we have had an early date with the absurd. The absurd is a philosophical concept by French Algerian philosopher and writer Albert Camus. He outlines it as the contradiction between man's inherent want for meaning in life and the universe that appears to lack any such thing. When faced with the absurdity of their own existence, the choices in front of a person are one of two things, either continuing on with life or committing suicide. As a man of the 20th century, Camus lived in a time of social upheaval during which many lost the traditions that gave their life meaning. Religion was becoming less and less popular as a way for people to give meaning to their lives, and even more interestingly, ideology slowly took its place, due to the fact that in pursuing them, one cuts ties with the absurd. Camus, however, called this a form of philosophical suicide, as in running away from the issue of life not having meaning, you demean your philosophical integrity. To some of you it may sound as if this philosopher leaves little room for happiness in life. That, however, is actually untrue. In a very influential essay titled The Myth of Sisyphus, he outlines why we should still continue living despite everything. The essay compares the struggles of humanity against the absurd to the ancient Greek myth of Sisyphus, who was a king that had been condemned by the gods to roll a boulder up a hill endlessly only to see it fall back down when he reaches the top, and then have to do it all over again. It's a struggle, the eternity of which is only rivaled by its pointlessness. Camus, however, argues that in this situation, Sisyphus would be happy, as he'd be satisfied with the very act of pushing the boulder up the hill, rather than with getting it to the top. In the same way, when we come to the realization that life has no meaning, rather than losing hope, that should provoke the opposite response. The things that we do in life are not meaningful because they serve a higher purpose, but purely because we find them to be worthwhile. When one comes to terms with the absurdity of their own existence, we can look for the beauty that lies beyond it. Our lives are enough, our happiness is enough, and the people around us are enough. In a way, these things are not useful for getting the rock up to the top of the peak, but for making the struggle itself a little more bearable. If you were to take away from this speech that doomers are just whiny, then you would be missing the point. I think there's a lot more to it. Nihilism and apathy are probably going to be two of the biggest issues of our current generation, especially as economic and social problems continue to ramp up. But in times of hopelessness, we should remember that said hopelessness should be our driving force. I do suppose that some words of encouragement would be in order here, but for now, all I can ask is that you just 
lift and continue pushing the boulder uphill. Thank you.